Welcome to the Polite Greeting Stop Jumping Talks. This is the second video in this series. And whether you have a dog that jumps on you when you come home or jumps on company or jumps on people that you meet on the streets or a dog that's maybe more random, maybe it only jumps when you have something in your hand or when it's excited. This is the place to be to transform that jumping struggle into beautifully polite manners. I'm Debbie Schaefer of The Well-Mannered Dog, and I've been helping dog lovers keep the fun of having a dog while reducing the frustration of doggy misbehavior since 1987. Today, we're going to look at why dogs really jump and when they jump. Plus, I'm going to give you some strategies that will help your dog calm down because we know a lack of calmness is one of the key contributing factors to your dog's jumping issue. I'm going to show you a different way to deliver your rewards that will have a significant impact on your dog's excitability level. This is really important because knowing that can be the difference between a dog that stays excited and one that can be calm enough to politely greet people. But first, I have to tell you, the response to our first video has been incredible. Thank you so much for watching and for commenting. Now, if you missed the first video in this series, you should go back and check it out because I covered the number one reason why training often fails. And I showed one of our foundation games that hits on all four of the categories that your dog needs to learn to have that beautifully polite feet on the floor behavior that you want, resulting in a dog that's not going to be embarrassing and it's not going to frustrate you and it can participate more in your life. If you haven't seen that video yet, go watch it right now. Click the link below to watch it and then come back to the second video. Okay, now let's get started at looking at why dogs really jump and when they jump and strategies that enhance the calmness you need in order to have a dog that does not jump. We're gonna be covering a lot of ground today. So be sure you download your PDF that is your polite greetings planner and your calmness menu. So there's a reason that you're watching this video. It's either because your dog's current jumping struggle is limiting your dreams and all the things you want to do with your dog, or you're tired of being frustrated and embarrassed and hurt by your dog's jumping. And there's never been a better time to transform that jumping struggle into a dog that actively keeps its cute little feet firmly planted on the ground. Because if you want to enjoy the activities that are just around the corner, the holidays, the vacations, the company, the outings that you want your dog to be a part of, you will need to help your dog get new skills now. Okay, so to get started, you want to know when you can anticipate jumping to occur. This will allow you to get in front of that jumping struggle, to be proactive and either implement some prevention or to go into training mode once your dog already has the skills. One of the top reasons dogs jump on people is because their association with people is that of excitability. They lack the ability to be calm under that set of circumstances. They're excited. In addition, they lack self-control at that time and they can't disengage because what they want is to be on that person, in that person, all over that person. <laughs> the second reason dogs jump might surprise you. Dogs jump a lot of times when they're worried about something. So it might be they're naturally not very confident with people. And that jumping looks a little bit different. It might be, you know, kind of doing a cower and a jump at the same time or have its tail tucked or really, really low as it jumps on the person. So it's really because they're not sure about how to deal with that worry or that anxiety. And the third reason dogs jump is they simply haven't been taught how to interact with people. They don't know how to keep their feet on the ground. And that can actually be the start of the thing that worries them about people. So your dog's jumping problem could be all or just one of those causes. But here's the thing. The common element in all of those causes is your dog is not calm. So we're going to cover some strategies to help your dog calm down. The first skill your dog needs is calmness. Every time your dog is jumping, it is not calm. So there are two huge things we need in order to grow your dog's calmness. One is we need to implement something called the calmness menu. 
We know your dog will become more of what it does each day. So each day your dog is practicing calmness, it will become more calm. Your calmness menu gives you three categories of things you can do to help your dog grow in that calmness direction. The first column of the calmness menu is the calm laid back option column. These are activities you can do with your dog to help reduce overall stress, to reduce excitability. Here's a list of simple things you can do to get started. So you can give your dog a lick pacifier, something where there is food frozen or stuck into something like a Kong or a topple toy or a lick mat. And you give that to your dog to lick. Repeated licking actually helps produce a ton of calmness in dogs. It's one of your best calmness strategies. Sniffing also is a calmness strategy. So you can help your dog sniff by giving it its meals in a snuffle mat, or you can sprinkle food in the grass and have your dog sniff to get that food. Chewing is also another fantastic way to reduce stress and increase calmness in your dog. So you can provide your dog with long lasting chews that are gonna really keep the dog going and interested for a long period of time and a deep massage for 20 minutes a day is gonna greatly grow your dog's ability to be calm because it just like for us, it's super relaxing. Now the second calmness of your calmness menu is the cultivating calmness column. That is actual training games that teach calmness as a skill. So in our last video, we covered the rascally unpredictable food game, which is one of the calmest games. And today, later in this video, we're going to cover the Hunt Puppy game, which also is another fantastic game in that second column of your calmness menu. In addition, you can start spending your dog's breakfast and dinner by rewarding your dog throughout the day for calmness. You want to deliver food in a super calm, discreet way. So if your dog's laying on the back of the couch, enjoying the sun, you can go over and calmly deliver a piece of food. Your dog is um, laying in its crate or laying on its dog bed. You can calmly go over and deliver a piece of food. Your dog's chewing on a chew and being a good dog or engaging a lick pass fire. You can calmly go over and calmly deliver a piece of food. The more you reward that calmness that's happening throughout the day, the more it's going to grow. And the third column of your calmness menu is about providing your dog with true deep rest. This is the combination of both sleep and resting. Often dogs misbehave because they're overly tired and they are overly stressed. They have too many choices that are available to them. So put your dog away. Help it get the rest that it needs. How long they need is going to depend on each individual dog. Each dog is different, so you might try something and make decisions based on how your dog acts afterwards. It might be you do this by putting your dog in a quiet room, or it might go into a crate or other confinement space your dog is used to. It needs to be a quiet place where your dog can truly decompress, calm down, and relax. In addition, you want that space to be one that provides your dog with less choices. Okay, so now let's go back to that second column, the column of actively teaching your dog to be calm, because that column is the one that we want to work on now. We want to put in some games that actively teach calmness. And you can start doing that with this very simplistic game called Hunt Puppy. But first, before I show you the Hunt Puppy game, I want to give you something to think about. I want you to think about how your dog holds its head and its body. Have you ever noticed when you're watching wildlife or you're watching a nature show that an animal that is alert has its head up? Everything about its body is up and it's big. The animal looks really tall, whereas when it's relaxed, the body is lower. So if it's a grazing animal, its head's low and it's probably grazing. Whereas if it is a predatory type animal, instead of carrying its head really, really high, it's more at half mast or it might literally be sniffing. So we have the same thing with dogs. When dogs are excited, their head is up, it pops up, their ears are forward and they're standing really tall. The exception would be if they're hunting where they're in a stalking mode. 
Whereas when they're relaxed, their head is much lower. The brain believes what the body is doing. So we can teach dogs to lower their arousal level by teaching them to lower their head. And that's what the hump puppet game does. Okay, so I'm starting off. I don't have any food in my hands. I don't have my hands going into my pocket or into a treat bag to get cookies. They're completely empty. They're completely natural. I say sniff. Then I take a breath. I need a pause in there. And then I get some food, not just one piece. So right now I have five pieces in my hand and I sprinkle them on the ground and my dog has to sniff them out and hunt them down. She's searching for the food. Here we go again. Sniff. There's my breath. Now I get my cookie. And I sprinkle it on the ground. In this game, Huli's head stays down five times longer than if I handed her the piece of food. This means I have five times longer of a head down and in that calmer position. Lowering my dog's head. She's searching. Her head's down for a period of time. She's sniffing if I'm on grass and she is relaxing. We have that low head carriage and the whole association is the word sniff equals relaxation. You saw Huli even lay down when I said the word. Sniff equals calmness. It equals lower your head and get yourself into that calmer state. By putting the body into a posture, that equals relaxation. We're convincing the brain that calmness is the behavior at that time. If you have a dog that is not allowed to eat food off the ground, maybe it's a service dog, or maybe it's just a dog that has gotten into a lot of trouble by scarfing stuff up into its mouth. You don't have to put the food on the ground, but you do want multiple pieces of food in your hand, and you want to lower your food all but to the ground. So I'm going super low, Kai and Huli's getting pieces of food out of my hand. The food is not being placed on the ground, but it is really causing that head to lower. And in her case, it lowers so much that she was bowing. Hunt Puppy is the perfect game, and it is the perfect food delivery system for excited or aroused dogs. And so what happens if you're doing repetitions of this game away from exciting circumstances as your dog learns the word sniff means lower your head. <laughs> she lowered her whole body. <laughs> sniff means lower your head and look for that food that's gonna be on the ground. The hunt puppy game is simplistic. It's easy, but don't underestimate its value and don't underestimate the need to actually teach the dog the word behavior association of lowering its head. Just think about the power you will have to create calmness just through the act of teaching the dog to lower its head on cue. You can start teaching that association just with your dog's breakfast and dinner, spending three minutes a day playing that hunt puppy game. I imagine some people are starting to wonder, how long is all this going to take? The amazing thing is, is you only need to play each game three minutes a day in order to see fantastic changes in your dog. So do you have three minutes before breakfast to play one game? What about three minutes when you get home? Or three minutes right before the kids get home? Or three minutes after dinner? Or three minutes before taking your dog on a walk? Or three minutes between TV shows? You know, a lovely client I have by the name of Craig said within one week of his first private appointment, his dog Henny was greatly improved in his jumping. But I think the most important thing for you to understand is you are looking for systematic progress over time, not perfection from the start. Wow, we covered a huge amount of ground in this video. So take a deep breath. You don't need to know it all. The big take home for this video was about why your dog jumps. The common factor is that it is not calm and how it's possible to transform that jumping struggle by teaching your dog to be calm. And that calmness can be accomplished through the game we introduced last week, plus the hunt puppy game that we introduced this week. In this next video, I'm gonna show you all the steps you need to apply this training to real life events. You're gonna love this one. In fact, 
I think it's going to be one of your favorites in this series. I'm going to walk you through the process of steps we take to ensure that a dog will learn to keep its feet on the floor all by itself without nagging and no matter what is going on. And you're also going to be able to download a roadmap of the process. It's going to be really cool and I think you're going to love it. So watch for an email to appear in your inbox. Okay, so I want to finish off by hearing from you. In the comments section, tell me what action you're going to take to get started. If you found value in this video, please share it with people that you know who also have a dog that jumps on people, especially if they have the dream of having a dog that keeps its feet on the floor. It's easier to get started on this journey when you know people who are working on this same path with you. Okay, so make sure you hit the like button, leave me your comments, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.